Hey guys, I'm Marty Geek. In this video, I have a hands-on look of the game's M155 working with the Xbox One. I already made a video with the PlayStation 4 where I did a proper unboxing, so if you want to watch that, make sure you do. I'll leave a link in my description. Uh, this is a 15.5-inch screen, um, 720p. Does not do. It does do 1080p um, scaled. You can do that, uh, but uh, like you see here, the screen is glossy, not matte. For in my opinion, it should have been matte instead of glossy. Um, it comes with this case where you have three adjustable angles. So you have this one there, you have the middle one, and you have the first one, which is gonna make the screen look uh, look upwards a little bit more. Other than that. It's all good. Uh, the plastic surrounding the screen for me is it feels very very plasticky. It feels cheap, uh, construction wise, but it still looks good. It looks good, but it looks it feels cheap in my opinion. Uh, on the sides, you have a couple buttons here. Uh, you have the menu button. You have the brightness up and down button. You have the volume button up and down. You have the power button. And under the flap here, the rubber flap, you have the HDMI. You have a 3.5 um, input. That way you could connect your headphones or a portable speaker. And you also have the port for the uh, USB. That way you could get power to the screen. Um, those are only things you're gonna need for this: the micro, uh, the USB cable, and the HDMI cable. That's it. And they both come with the package. They both come with the screen. Other than that, there's nothing surrounding the screen at all. You're not gonna find anything else on either side. Um, this using these screws right here that also comes with the screen is how you're gonna attach this case to the screen. To power the screen, all you gotta do is use the USB cable and connect it to the Xbox One. You can use the side port, or you can also use the rear port of the Xbox One. It has two ports, so I think for me it would be easier to use the rear one. Um, but maybe you wanna use the side one because the USB cable is not that long, and if you wanna use the screen next to the Xbox One, which is the proper way to use it, you might want to use the side one. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, like you see here, you connect the uh, HDMI cable there. The, I have connected the speaker there, and I have connected the power cable there as well, the USB cable. And of course, you got the buttons here and the side. After everything is connected, all you got to do is turn on the Xbox One, turn on the screen, and after the screen received the HDMI signal, the, it will turn on. Like see there, it says games. If it doesn't receive a signal, it will automatically turn off. Uh, now, with the Xbox One, it's been connecting perfectly good. Contrary to the PlayStation 4, which I still have in problems when I turn on um, either the either the screen or the Xbox one sometimes it will just not connect and I would like disconnect the cable and connect it again until it, it finally connects but here has been working flawlessly uh, I here I am zoomed into the screen that way you can see the how the colors look um, everything looks okay um, the contrast I, I bumped it up a little bit and I'll explain it now while I explain the walkthrough of the settings here. One thing that I wanted to share with you guys is the functions that you find in the menu button of the screen. Um, I'm gonna show you guys this a little bit more thoroughly because on the first video that I did, I could not um, you know, share the my experience here with the menu button section. Um, and what it is, is you press the menu button, you're gonna see this right here. And with the brightness button, would, that would be the, up and down button that's right in after the menu button, um, you're gonna have this access here. Um, here you got picture, you got sound, you got setup, and you got exit. So right here, if we go to picture, you could go ahead, click on, on the menu button again, and then you can, with the brightness button, you can go up or down here, like you see there, very, very easily. Um, here, um, for example, in contrast, I could press right there, and with the brightness button, I could go ahead and control the contrast. I honestly, I put it from 50, I'm gonna put it at 60. And press the, again, and that's it. Press the menu button and it takes you back here again. Saturation, you got color temperature. Um, here you got warmer, warm, cooler. So if you put it in cooler, should look a little difference. I don't notice that difference that much. 
but I'm just gonna leave it in normal and go back ahead get here go back here and let's get out of here let's go ahead hit back and that's it so now we go to sound here we go and click here the menu button again uh, you got balance you got bass you got treble you got equalizer now I wouldn't pay attention that much in the sound department because um, this really doesn't have a speaker at all um, it would only you know I guess it would change the sound in the headphones or a speaker if you connect it to it but like you see here you also have access to equalizer you see that you control the equalizer if you want if you know how to work with that you can go ahead and do that I'm just gonna leave it like that normally and go ahead back again and language here let's go and press it here if you want to switch the language press the menu again here when it's highlighted and with the up and down button you can change the languages they see there so you got English you got French you got Espanol, you got Italiano, and you got Douche. Look at that. That's it. So I'm just going to leave it in English. Press the menu button again. Um, here, menu setting, you got timeout. I guess it says timeout 30. So I guess it's like 30 seconds before this thing disappears. I think that's what it is. Um, it, I could go ahead and switch it to 20 seconds. Like I'm going to go ahead and put it in 20 seconds right there. Um, here transparency this is basically uh, the menu transparency like see there you put it very transparent this is totally useless right there so I would just leave it right there flat zero um, here back and that's it I'm um, here if you click here it's gonna reset all the settings that you've made all the changes and that's it let's get out of here well I press the volume button if you press the volume button it dis uh, the menu disappears as well but if you want to just quit right away, just click there and click the menu button and it just takes you out of the menu. Here we are playing some video game. This is uh, Forza Horizon 2 I'm playing here. And I gotta say, it, uh, the games work very, very good. I have no problems playing games here on the Xbox One. Uh, the resolution looks good as well. Like I said before, it's 720p, but it can scale all the way up to 1080p if you want. Um, but I think the screen automatically detects when you know when you con connect the Xbox One, if you have it automatically connected to you know 1080p on your home theater, uh, you don't really have to change the resolution when you put it uh, connect the screen. It will automatically detect that it's 1080p and it will scale you know properly to 1080p as well but the screen natively is 720p uh one thing that you see here that i'm using the screen over or on top of the xbox one that you should not do that <laughs> uh, you should not do that because i already did it with um doing here a couple gameplay i played with x um the forza and this golfing game and it got hot the xbox one got hot the fans started turning on something that i've never heard before uh because the cover the case of this uh, screen is going to cover the vents on top of the Xbox One. And it's going to get very, very, very hot. So I do recommend not to cover the vents with the screen. So it, it would be properly used here on the side. Uh, that way you could prevent any damage to the Xbox One or the screen because I touched the screen and it actually got very hot in the bottom and the, and the Xbox One, like I said, it got very, very, very hot. So here on the side, like you see here, it still looks good. The only problem is, is if you're in a small space, uh, you have those, you're going to have the screen xbox one and you're gonna have the 15 inch screen side by side so you're gonna re it's gonna require a bigger space unless you put like the xbox one like on the floor and you know you have an hdmi cable which is longer because the hdmi cable that comes with this screen is like three or four in uh like a feet it's not even i don't think it's even two f two feet long it's like a feet long so keep that in mind uh, of course it works everything here is gonna work so all the media apps are gonna work here uh, the great thing about this screen and the Xbox one is that you have access to sling TV so if you don't have like an antenna you will still be able to have live um, TV using the sling TV which works 
perfectly good um, on the screen and on the Xbox One. So other than that, guys, just wanted to share my experience here on the Xbox One. It works perfectly good. I just recommendation is do not put the uh, screen on top of the xbox one like you see here on the video because it's gonna overheat the xbox one and it's gonna um, overheat the screen as well and the bottom of the screen is gonna get very very hot so other than that thanks for watching the video if you have any questions leave it in the comments and i'll try to answer till next time guys